Hey y'all, Brian here on a lovely U.S. holiday doing some random deep thinking. Um, I was actually at the, the bookstore today and I realized that's where I do a lot of my best thinking. I also picked up a new book. I'm excited about it, but I'm more excited about what I want to talk about today. Um, and that's that we've gained a lot over the past couple decades uh, of, of the web, right? Uh, we've got lots of great new technology. Uh, for working with the web. We have lots of great new tools and applications built on the web, and we've done it all with a really, truly amazing search, right? You can search for literally anything on the web and you can find a pretty decent result. There's all sorts of things to be talked about when it comes to SEO and all sorts of random problematic aspects of a huge corporation owning the most popular search engine, actually the two most popular search engines in the world, that's uh, Google and YouTube. Uh, however, that's been pretty powerful, right? But along with all of this, we have had some difficulties. We've had some things that we've lost along the way. And I wanna to talk today about a very specific thing that we've lost, and that's tied together with that idea of amazing search. Now, this is super stream of consciousness, not like my usual videos, kind of a vlog style, and I think it's gonna be good and it's probably gonna be some things that we do uh, going forward, uh, at least on my personal channel. I've got all sorts of things on my professional channels uh, that you can watch if you wanna learn technologies. But before Google, before Google, we still had ways of navigating the web. I used a lot of them. Most of the time before Google was spent for me as a consumer in my teen years, into my early 20s, into my college years. Um, and what I think that we've lost, and we have some of it in some very small aspects of, of the internet, is that we lost the browsability of the web. Search is amazing. I can type in something specific that I'm looking for. I can find exactly what I need, but I don't always want to find exactly what I need. We lost this idea of like thumbing through the bookshelves of the web. We have some localized areas that this works within. You can do this on Wikipedia. Right, you can you can go down a rabbit hole. You can search. I, I think there's actually one of my favorite facts about about Wikipedia is that by clicking the first real link on every entry that you come to, you can start from one topic and always wind up at the philosophy page. Me being a philosophy uh, major in college, this is a wonderful fact for me, uh, and that kind of has this feeling of browsability, but. That's still, again, you searched for something, you landed on something, and then you can go down a rabbit hole. The issue is, what if there's a broad topic I want to learn more about or see more things? Uh, back in the day, in this kind of browsability era, there were a lot of different like quote unquote search engines, which were really directory searches. And there was Alta Vista, there was you know, Ask Jeeves, there was even like things like GeoCities to a degree kind of fell into this kind of realm. I think like AOL, right? AOL was a, was a big deal in that realm as well. First starting as your portal into the web, but then later on, once they kind of released their stranglehold on that aspect of things, they were a great directory system of the web. But for me, the um, the aspect of the directories was really Yahoo, um, which doesn't even exist anymore, really. I don't even think the website exists anymore. Maybe it does. Um, but I remember I actually had a friend that, that worked there after their prime, um, and they really did an amazing job of this directory idea. You land on the homepage, they did have a search box on it, at least eventually, but then they had these chunks, right? These, these sections of that homepage that had like the portals that you could kind of go into and you could dig more into for all of that. And I remember vividly getting to like Yahoo Kids and like there were all sorts of like online games and I could just, I could browse through them and say, that looks interesting. Click on it, play a game, go back, read some web page about some random kid-friendly thing. And I could just go on like that. I could learn really anything that I wanted to, at least if it was on the web and the web was much smaller back then. And we've lost that. 
Like, where do you go right now to just look around? Now, I mentioned going to the bookstore. I actually went specifically to pick up a book. Uh, this is Stephen Fry's Mythos, which I'm really excited to dig into. And I knew that I wanted to get either that or he's got two new ones out in the series. Uh, but I also wanted to, to look around. I wanted to browse shelves. I wanted to go to sections. I wanted to kind of experience this, uh, this browsable area. I didn't go there specifically saying, I want to experience a browsable area. I went there thinking, maybe I'll find something. I had coffee in hand. It was great. I, I knew where, where the Stephen Fry book was. I was good to go. I picked up two other things. I can't mention them on channel because they're gifts for my wife later on this year. Uh, but I wouldn't have ever thought to get either one of them. One is something that I'll actually have my son write for a Mother's Day thing. And I think that's going to be super cool. Um, but I would have had to know that it existed to find it. And this just happened literally, I wasn't even looking for things for her. I was actually in the board game section. I was looking at some board game stuff and I saw like a character section and said, oh, that's amazing. It was even out of place, right? It was out of place. And yet I could just say, yoink, how could I have done that on the web? In this era, I couldn't have done that. There's nothing that, that would have allowed me to do that. And that's a that's a significant loss. As much as Aaron Sorkin can be, can be problematic in some ways, he he made The Newsroom, which I one of my favorite uh, HBO shows. And uh, there's a scene where he's sitting in his therapist's office, one of the, the main characters is, and he's he's thumbing through and he sees the the therapist's uh, collection of encyclopedias. He's like, "What happened to encyclopedias?" He's like, "You you know you experience it. You open up. You open up R and you read about the fall of the Roman Empire." And the therapist is like, "You can find that information online. You can search for it." And he just says, "You know that's that's the point. You have to know that you're looking for it." And that's a, you know there's some character moments that happen with that, but you have to know what you're looking for in a searchable index. If you don't know what you're looking for and you just want to be given something or, or look in a topic, I don't want the top 10 results. I want, if I, like, I used to be part of like many like fandoms on the early internet, right? I'd go to uh, Sailor Moon forums. I'd go to, later on, I'd go to Firefly and Serenity forums. I'd go to Star Wars forums, not, not even forums, right? just websites where people would just talk about the, like the theory or they would talk about things they liked. I, I would discover all of the uh, Chinese used in, in Firefly in every episode, broken down by episode, things that I wouldn't have known to search for. I would have just said, I want to think and see content around Firefly. Now, I've talked before, uh, both on this channel, on my blog, and with some others uh, at various aspects, and, and I'll provide a link down to the to the um, to the article that I wrote on it. Like web rings were a thing, and that helped in the in the browsability, but it wasn't this idea of a directory based web, a directory based web with editors in the directories. Right, most of these different pages these different directories had people surfacing new websites, surfacing new and interesting things uh, that were meaningful in a lot of ways and were meaningful to people. So the web doesn't have that. Again, we have Wikipedia. You can search and you can maybe find it. We have a whole bunch of fan wikis out there, which are all great. Wiki design is one of my least favorite things on the internet. So I think that we need this again. I think that with the commercialization of the web, search is highly problematic. With the commercialization of the web, the creator areas of the web are much weaker than they used to be. With the commercialization of the web, we, we have run out of the ability to curate and aggregate for our communities in meaningful ways. We have, you know, Facebook groups. We have, well, we had Twitter circles, but those are gone, right? We have Discord. We have all these things on the closed web in many ways where we can share, and sharing is a good thing, but can we go to a, to a portal, right? To use an old school term, a portal, and, and say, I want to see websites talking about Star Wars, um, maybe even like here's some, some dedicated websites, here's RSS feeds pulling latest articles that have, have this in there. The, the fun thing is 
for the most part in this world, in this discoverability world, there's not a huge economic basis for what's going on. Sure, you could put like an ad on it or you could even sell it. Like there, there are ways to like monetize it. I don't really want to talk about monetizing it, but we could very easily recover bits and pieces of it, but it's a community effort to do that. And I don't know that the community exists to do it. Uh, I could probably make a small corner of the tech. I'm actually talking tomorrow, if I post this actually today, uh, February 20th, I'm talking February 20th, uh, about the future of the Jamstack. We could maybe make a little corner of the web that is a directory-based thing talking about the Jamstack. We've definitely done that with the web ring idea. There are web rings out there of Jamstack enthusiasts, even though that never really retook off. But it's one of those things where when we when we think about this, it's really seizing the control back on the internet to individual creators, to this idea of we are consumers that wish to consume content and not be force fed various aspects of that content, right? If I do a search now for Star Wars on Google, I'll find the, the official stuff. I'll probably find a whole bunch of shopping stuff. I'll probably find all sorts of e-commerce, probably some stuff on Amazon. Um, all these things that while I might want that, because there's always there's this idea of like purchase intent when we're talking about search. I used to work at Algolia and we talked about like when we're doing this, when you're doing a good search, especially for e-commerce, you want to think about the the purchase intent of a search query. So the purchase intent for for you know a Star Wars search query, there might be eBay listings, there might be official toy lines, there might be the actual Amazon listing for the uh, for the videos for the actual purchase of the video on demand. There could be a Disney Plus thing there. All these things are again commerce focused, not community focused, not content focused, not I just want to think about and immerse myself in this world. There's something missing in the internet today. And I worry that we can't get that back because we open this Pandora's box of just how much influence and just how much money can be made with the web. I want to believe there's a future of the web that includes this sort of idea, that there's a future of the web that is about the creator, that there's a future of the web that is about just wanting to see something for the sake of seeing it, just wanting to create something for the sake of creating it. We keep telling everyone that it's only worth doing if you make money off of it. And I'm, I'm super guilty of this. I'm, I make a little app, I'm like, ooh, could I turn this into like a side business that will earn me enough money on the side to do X, Y, and Z? The, the, the internet was built off of passion. And when everything is monetized, the passion goes away. Is it possible to regain that? Is it possible to not worry about purchase intent and instead worry about forming a group of information that allows for a person to find interesting information that may not be surfaced unless they know exactly what they're looking for? There's so much information out there. Curation is so important. And when we have our bots curating for us and we make it important to search and not discover, we lose. And I think about this also from the, and again, I told you this was stream of consciousness, right? I think of it from a perspective of my son. I would love to give him an area of the web he's eight and a half, that he could go and look up Star Wars things specifically for kids. I know there's things like YouTube kids and stuff like that, but they're not, they're curated to agree, but they're, but they're not fully curated. And there's so much crap in them. Um, and I, and I watch crap and that's fine. But like, I watch certain, and I've introduced him to certain YouTube videos that are like theory videos on stuff like The Legend of Zelda, Zeltic being one of the one of the big ones I like to introduce him to and show him things on. Whereas people who are passionate about the topic, doing creative work in thinking about it, doing deeper thinking about the the commerce that they consume, and putting together 
more interesting information. It's not just a playthrough, although I like watching playthroughs. It's not just mindless information. It is, hey, I thought about these things and I pieced these things together from the tiny bits of information that are available in the games. Let me talk to you about that. And they put a lot of effort into it and stuff like that. And I like I like that. I think that's amazing. And it's a glimmer of the web that I used to know. Um, but there was a Yahoo Kids. And I, looking back, was safe in that area. My parents didn't exercise as much oversight as maybe they should have. Because, again, we didn't know that much back then. But they did exercise some. And they would have felt, I think, good at me looking at many of the things that I saw in Yahoo Kids. Um, so where are the safe groups of information with, you know, regularly updated pieces on Minecraft, on Star Wars, on, on Zelda, on video games, on whatever, because there are decent creators out there. And I think that they should be surfaced in, a, in an important curated way, um, to make this thing work as it was intended to work granted there's still this commercial side right like these creators are oftentimes being paid you know by these companies to to make this this content right the advertisers and all that and that's a problem and i i fully understand that um but there's something there and i wish we would explore it i don't know that we will what do you think i would absolutely love to know uh, down in the comments or wherever. Um, I realized by saying that, right, I'm talking about like the engagement engine here. But like, I'm, I'm honestly very, very curious about what you think about this and about whether this is something that could work. I know that the web rings conversation didn't go anywhere, uh, which is really depressing for me. There were some, some really smart people talking about it and there were little tools made for it. And I think I thought it was really, really cool. Um, but I think I think it was it was either AOL or it was Yahoo that like built itself as the front page of the web, and there's a lot of interesting conversation to be had around the need of a front page for the web, and the need of a place for all of this to be aggregated, not just at a global scale but at a niche scale as well. Let me know what you think. I think I might do more of these deep thoughts. Thanks, y'all. Catch you later.